What's up, ego hackers? I am here to deliver that um, video that I was talking about, um, about the end of today's being right, which I'm sure that um, TI users love to hear, especially um, Templars. But um, the reason that I was saying that was because I had a really interesting dream the other day, and um, I think I believe it was like a week ago or two weeks ago. But the dream was basically I was explaining myself to people. I was trying to get them on the same page as me and I couldn't. And I knew before they said anything that I wasn't because I was reading their body language, their, their facial expressions, and I was reading their body language. And I was like, oh no, I need to explain myself better. I need to get my point across better, but they are already tuning out and I can't do this in real time. How do I fix this? And it was such, in the dream, it was such a huge pain point for me. It was like, it was like my world was ending because I had made them feel like, well, no, that's not quite it. I made them, I, I, I knew because of how I made them feel that they weren't open to my ideas. And that, that point really gave me anxiety. I just had a lot of anxiety in this dream about the fact that people were tuning me out and I could see it before they even said anything, before they even, they didn't even have to be negative about it. I could just tell that they were not listening by the way that they looked in their face and their eyes. So, that to say, I believe in that dream that I had TI inferior, for some reason I had taken on um, the traits of an ENFJ, or a ESFJ, but considering the fact that I was paying a lot of attention to their body language and the impression that I was making, it was probably an ENFJ. Um, and that dream was really interesting to me because after I had that dream, I started looking at the real world and the job that I do. And I talk to probably like 30 people a day, give or take. And these are complete strangers. And I am introducing the concept of taking a risk, taking, uh, basically making a partnership, a business partnership, and putting a little bit of skin in the game. And this can go one of two ways. People can feel really good about it and really excited about it, or they can feel like you are the worst person on the place, face of the earth. And you can tell within a few seconds how that is gonna go. And what I noticed when I was um, interacting with these people after a while and reflecting on that dream was, yeah, that dream's kind of accurate. Like, obviously, I'm a TI parent. I don't often have the, the feeling of anxiety when explaining ideas to people because if somebody just doesn't get my point, I just go, you know, I probably didn't explain that just the right way. So let me get my point across another way. Let me try that again. But it is very much the truth that people are very willing to tune you out. So when I say that ENFJs are right, I mean that their anxiety of not being heard is not completely unfounded. Because if you are primarily focusing on people's emotions, you can see in their eyes when they get emotional about something and then they lock up and then they are not listening and you're done. So, ENFJs being about both people's emotions and about the truth kind of gives them an interesting paradox, which I believe there is a paradox in every uh, hero versus inferior, and probably there's a hidden wisdom in all the inferiors, but the uh, hidden wisdom of the TI inferior or the TE demon is basically the truth that people don't listen. They're not listening. <laughs> they
they don't listen because they don't people don't like change in order to change they would have to be open to new ideas in order to be open to new ideas they would have to listen so they take out the first step and then they tune out whenever they hear a new idea they don't even consider it in fact it makes them emotional you can tell by their emotions when they are unwilling to change and to a certain extent a conversation becomes pointless because you can already tell by their emotions that they are not going to do a single thing to change. So, not to make ENFJs more paranoid about people not listening because they probably are slightly <laughs> hypocritical in the sense that <sighs> In order for, for you to correctly perceive that someone is not listening, you have to also be listening. And you can't do that by just talking over them incessantly. You have to have proper feedback. And obviously, more ENF, uh, mature ENFJs do do this. But there is a point where ENFJs do get so anticipate. Mm, they presume that they know the direct correlation between emotion and habituation, I want to say, where they can predict people solely by their emotions. And that can kind of get in the way of their communication. But on the whole, they are right. People don't listen. And it's because they don't want to. They want their circumstances of life to get this be the same. Especially when they're older, they're stuck in a reality. And even if they say that they don't like the reality, they do like it because they keep it. Actions speak louder than words. This is also something that ENFJs and Templars in general know very well. <clears throat> ENFJs have the that paradox where they understand that people's emotions are important, but the truth is also important. But you can't tell people the truth without making them emotional. And unless you have this continuous battle with the truth, you will also doubt yourself when it comes time to whip up pe people's emotions with the truth. So I can understand why it is a very scary topic to approach. If you're constantly living in comfort of making people feel good, but you also want the truth because you're a Templar and you care about reality and you care about people's growth, then you're leaving your own comfort zone just by wanting what it is you really, really want. And that is to tell people the truth because Templars do have pretty good access to the truth. I mean, people have access to the truth in their own ways, depending on their cognitive functions. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> ENFJs are right. And it is especially true in introducing new concepts to people. People, you, people will treat you like an enemy just because you tell them a new idea. It happens over and over and over again because people have these, they're set in their ways. They think that they know everything and they think that they know everything. They've figured everything out. They know everything that's about to happen. They know who you are as soon as you walk in the door and they get a read on you. They decide who you are. That being said, I am very happy that I have an ENFJ as a coworker of mine. Because that is very helpful. And I do think that ENFJs would be pretty good at sales. But yeah, ENFJs are very right about that. And I am being just every day hammered into that concept. People don't listen. People do not listen. You have to get their emotions first if you have any chance of them listening to you. But even then, new ideas are scary.